residents of Meeple Town. Today we're looking at our num top 50 games, 30 through 21. I had a malfunction. Nailed, nailed it. A little brain malfunction there. You'd think we would re-record that. We're not, we're going, not to. going to. We're not going to. It's we're all we're raw. Yep. All natural, baby. We're just gonna jump into this with our number 30, starting with John this time. Alright. That just was really <laughs> anticlimactic, by the way, Dean. The way you were Sorry, talking. it would sound better if I said we're gonna start with Dean this time. Is that better? no, no, you should have been like, we're starting with John this time. It's his turn to go because it's gonna be so awesome. It is so great. Ever do <laughs> your face. <laughs> Your face. <laughs> Number 30, oh, dude, Everdale. What I love is like your reactions and my wife's reactions are the same. <laughs> You're basically my work wife. <laughs> Don't say that. That's not even our job. <laughs> All right, so my number 30 is a game that was really high on my list last year. Uh, I'm actually going to pull that up here. And it's dropped, I mean, but not ridiculous amount. So this game was number nine last year. It's number 30 this year. I recently played this, and I'll be real. I said this on the podcast. If I had played this even more recently, or before I come up with this whole top 50 list, this might have dropped even further for me, Dean. And I know Dean's not going to like it, but that is... Like what you want, John. It's Everdell. But you Ever said Everdell. No, I didn't. Yeah. I did not say Everdell. In the midst of your giggling, you said Everdell. I did not. You're already pulling it up, so you, like, no. <laughs> Go back and watch the tape. I will. And I said Everdell. <laughs> so we're off to a good start. Yeah, we're off. To, we're yeah, it's a rousing start. All right. So with Everdell, the positives. This is still overwhelmingly positive. This is definitely on my top fifty. So I'm, I'm just going to tell you a few. Also, that when I say anything negative, I guess it's just telling you why it's it's fallen, not that it's not a great game. <laughs> those are not components to the game. <laughs> no, those, those are my components. I have those. You have that bird. That I one? do not have the bird. And a horse. So this is a great game. I believe that if you're kind of going from that next step from a gateway to something like a little bit heavier, and I really really enjoy that the worker placement that coincides with the tableau building is cool too. Yeah. You know how like we talk about key flower, how they do the auctioning with the worker placement? Mm -hmm. I like games where you have like different things going on and it's your choice whether you want to place it there and beat somebody or maybe you want to build in your tableau, which I think that that's really neat in this game. I like how you only have 15 slots and you got to make those the most, the best that you can. You even taken some of them out by some of the cars that could break down construction or leave or take critters out and all that different things. There's also the race element with the cards up top. I think that that's pretty neat in the game as well. But um, it's fallen just it fallen a little bit for me because I don't know, Dean. I, I feel like it is a little bit samey, and I I've played Pearlbrook. I haven't played the other expansions, <clears throat> but I didn't love Pearlbrook. So there you go. I liked it okay, but I wasn't in love with it. So, yeah, we liked Pearl Brook when we played it, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like a, a underworld, whatever that Lord of the Rings, Lord of the Rings, what Lord are, of what are we Lord, doing? Lords of Waterdeep expansion. Like it's not that kind of that kind of game changing expansion, you know. It's not, um, but it is. It's good. It's fine. If I had it, I would play with it. Yeah, all it, you know, probably all the time, but it didn't. I didn't like it enough to just run out and get it. So, but I still, I still like Everdell quite a bit. It's definitely on my <clears throat> on my top fifty. Beautiful game. I think it's probably way higher on your list. Yeah, it for sure will be higher on my list. There I, you go. I do love this game a lot. And I'll number talk thirty, about it baby. My number thirty is a cooperative game, a pretty heavy cooperative game called Spirit Island, mm. and I always refer to this answer. is the kind of a. A reverse Puerto Rico where you are the island protectors. You're not coming to take over an island, but you have people Protecting. that are coming. You have these colonists that are coming to, to uh, take over the island, and they're building their buildings, and you don't want them to do that. And so what you are doing is taking on the role, role of a spirit, helping out the Dehan, those the local villagers, and that is not a picture of the game either. Um, there's a lot of, like creative components on here so those are all painted but so they're coming out to the island and you're helping out the Dehan to destroy them and you always feel like at the beginning of the game especially like oh we can do this we've got this under control and you don't you just don't have it you under just have control. to best manage the best you can yeah you have to hang in this one as best you can and if you can hang until the end it progressively gets not easier but it gets like 
it, it gets easier to beat the game. Like it's really difficult to, to meet all the conditions at the beginning of the game, but as the game progresses, it becomes more manageable to be able to, to win the game. So. Yeah, this didn't make my top 50, but I really do enjoy this one a whole lot, actually. It was kind of borderline, and for a cooperative game, that's good because I'm not a huge cooperative fan. I like the kind, I like the, the card play and the deck building part of it. You know, like yeah. that, that mm -hmm. engine building where you're getting, like you're saying, like at the beginning, you don't have a whole lot of moves. You may not be that powerful, but as the game progresses, you're getting increasingly <laughs> powerful, and that can really help you. In this, so I, it's it's got really brilliant card play with the icons and the way yeah. all those work and stuff like that. It's and the, yeah, the delay mechanism is really interesting. That's true. Yeah, I like yeah. that a lot. But I, I I find myself liking games that have that like I play cards and in order to get them back, I have to like take an action or you know take a turn or something like that to be able to take those cards back. Yeah. Um, like a uh, like Concordia, you mm -hmm. know, one of your favorite games. I I, yeah. I like that. So anyway, Spirit Island, yep. my number I'll thirty. All right, good choice. So my number 29 is a game that was really high on my list uh, last year as well. It was number five. I pulled it up already. Dang uh, it, Dean, stop I'm pulling it up. <laughs> no suspense. It's ranked 32 overall still. Yeah. By the way, Everdell was 40 overall. I don't know what was Spirit Island. It's I, up there too. It's really right. high. You don't have to. It. You're going. You're going to go all the way back, huh? For Meeple Town, just for Meeple Town. Yeah, sure. Why not? Oh, well, you can keep talking about Blood That's Rage. really nice of you. So, 13 overall. Whoa! 13 overall. I didn't realize it was that high. Oh, people love this game. Oh, I know. It's yeah. a really good game. <clears throat> but I didn't realize it was that high. Yeah. So Blood Rage is just a bloodbath, you know, crazy game where like it's actually not all that complex to play. Um, it's all about car I mean car drafting is one of the big mechanics. Area control, me trying to slaughter Dean, Dean trying to slaughter me. We're all on this map that's pretty dead gum tight and as the game progresses, Ragnarok is taking place and these parts of the map are blowing up. And guess what? It gets even more. It shoves us all slowly together. And if you don't want to fight, <laughs> woo! Oh! Woo! -hoo. <laughs> Was too there. there. Ooh, all right. Um, if you don't want to fight, if you don't like conflict, this is not the game for you. But if you don't mind, you're like, you know what? Who cares? I will say that I've played this game and literally had my wife get up from the table, quit in the middle of the game, and was just done. Wow. Part of it was because of some snarky comments that I was making. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe all of it was. <laughs> um, There's a theme sometimes when you play. These games. She said life. I didn't tell her a rule that I told her. This is like a <laughs> this is a constant argument between me and my wife. <laughs> Every game I teach her, she tells me, You didn't teach me that rule. And I go, Yes, I did. And then it's not good. Anyway, Blood Rage is probably way higher on your list. It's 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 one of those games where I feel drawn in from the beginning. I never get disengaged because yeah. everyone's doing stuff and two hours goes by and I, it just feels like I just watched a great movie. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's, 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 it's fun. Uh, I like it a lot. Yeah, this is a, a great game. And one that, that we've introduced to newer players, not, not, not super heavier gamers, I guess, like, cause the, the gameplay is itself might take a little bit to grasp kind of what you're doing, I guess, but the gameplay itself is not difficult. I, I, just, you know, I introduced it recently to two people that don't really play games. That just like like this type of a theme or a fantasy type theme or yeah. whatever, and they you know they didn't win, but they didn't play poorly. Yeah, yeah, this is a great game. Now I will say I've, I've played the app some lately. I'm not a big fan of the app. I've played it through several times. I just I think it's a little clunky. Maybe that's just the a Mac version of it or whatever. But it's it's not my favorite. It's a Steam. I didn't version. know there was. It's a Steam. App. Oh, yeah. Steam yeah, version. Sorry. Um, so it's clunky on there. But how it, does how does app sum compare with dim sum? That was John's number 29. My number 29 is a game with art by an artist that John absolutely loves. Clans of Caledonia. Clans of Caledonia. You guessed from that or you looked at my screen? I just saw the CL and that's what I thought. <laughs> and because I'm tired of you jumping ahead on my game, so I'm just going to tell him. Hey, all right, I'm just going to read off the rest of your There we go. Games. Hey, this is back to back 2017 <laughs> games, and I'm pretty sure my next one is too. Wow. Okay. Um, okay. Clans of Caledonia is uh, an economic theme game where you are taking off these pieces from your player board to put them onto the main board to build them out there. And when you do that, you're opening up spots to produce new items. Um, there is the the track where you can buy and sell goods that fluctuates, which is really interesting. This is just a really fun game. And I, I kind of, 
I avoided this one a little bit for a while. I, this I, this was not on my list last year because I just played it for the first time um, within the last six months or something. Why were you afraid of it? Not afraid. It just I thought this might be more heavy, like for my taste. You it's know, definitely it, not. And it gets compared to Terra Mystica, and I really like Terra Mystica, but I didn't feel like I need another Terra Mystica until um, we play Gaia Project do you, at some point. Do you feel that now? No, I don't feel like it compares to it. I mean, it does because it has very some similar mechanisms like removing something from the board to reveal something on your board and then you're building out on the main board but other than that like i don't i don't i get the comparison but it's just not yeah it's not there for me as much but i just think this is a really fun beautiful game you like this one a lot too yep uh, <clears throat> i may like it more than you maybe so so speaking of games that's your 20 um Eight, right? There's a lot in this small box too. Do we start with thirty? No, it's a, a small box that has a ton of components, which is it's pretty neat. great. It's I pretty love neat. that. Yeah. Speaking of games where you take off buildings or whatnot and it reveals something below, my number twenty-eight is a game that came out last year, and that is Tapestry. This game is the thing I love about this game is that it's not you know divisive at all. It's not polarizing. Everybody Everyone decides that they love it. They love Stonemaier games, and there's no problems at all, and we are a happy family. But truthfully, um, this game is really good, Dean. I have some like questions in the back of my mind. I've played this a decent amount. I still feel like even with the balancing, there are unbalanced factions in this game. But I don't really care, because the gameplay is really fun. It is I really do fun. care, honestly, I do care. But there's just so much to explore in this game. I Since I've got it, I've had a blast exploring these different factions and trying to figure out how to make them work and trying to figure out, okay, maybe I'm just not playing the militants as optimally as I should, you know, as I could or something like that. Maybe it is uh, well balanced. The other negative to this is I think the tapestry cards can be a little lucky for sure. That's my biggest knock on the game is like you could get a really great tapestry card right off the rip. It's, you know, I wish that you got dealt a two or three and got to pick one or something like that to at yeah. least like balance that a little bit more. I can house rule that. Um, but anyway, but besides that, you're going up on tracks and it's simple, right? You yeah. choose to go up on a track, you spend some resources to go up on a track. And it just, I don't know what it is about this game, but I really like it. I mean, yeah. 28 overall right now, it's, I, mean, I could, if I find out the more I play it that the, the sieves are not really as matched as I'm afraid some of them may not be, it could, I could see it falling over time, but I still, I'm having a really good time with this game and I like it. There are some that I prefer to play over others too, some yeah. that that are Just easier more to play. Yeah, I think um, it's hard for me to say because I have not I've not even played all of the the different the civilizations in this one. But the ones that I've played I've really liked. I've played a lot of them. <clears throat> I do think too with when you play with new people, I mean you can really blow somebody out of the water. Like you can beat somebody by 100 yeah. points in this game. You know, like the the scores can be very uh, there can be a large chasm between those between scores. So I kind of like that there are easier factions for yeah. new players to play with, and then you can explore ones that you might not know as well that make you not as good. You yeah. know, so it's true. Yeah, the trolls, I also love the trolls may come out in the comments for this one, but they will really come out probably whenever you. They shouldn't. Say it. They shouldn't more so than any other game we pick. You know, like there there are picks. Um, there are several Board Stonemaier games. games that are not on my list. That this one will be for sure, and I'll have one other one, I guess. But other than that, like I don't, I don't have. I've got a lot more Come On games on my list than I have Stonemaier games. So. Everyone, take a deep breath. Board games are fun. Board, say this with me. Three Do you think times. people are going to be this games mad? Are fun. Have you gone and looked at the comments on Tapestry? No. Yeah. <laughs> Go look. People get angry about. They don't. People. People in Stegmire and Stonemire, these people, the internet and, people, and and in Tapestry, they they cause quite the stir. Nah. But I I this this is my favorite. <laughs> uh, Jamie Stegmire. You remember the episode of The Office where Andy is like, "I hate drama." That's what I feel like you're you are right now. <laughs> you kind of love drama, don't you? Yes. No. They ask, uh, that's what they ask Andy. Uh, no. Eventually, he admits to it. It is true. Twenty eight. All right, there we go. So my number 28 is another, I, I gotta look, I'm pretty sure it's another 2017 game. It is, Gentis. Um, wow, this is that's a, still this high for you. Mm-hmm. Cool. <laughs> no, 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 I, I just, 
I just thought, I know, I just thought by <clears throat> the way we've talked about it that I thought that it had fallen for you um, more than that or whatever. So it anyways. did fall a little bit. I think this one was in the teens in 2019. I'll you've got my list over there. Yeah, I'll look it over uh, But in this game, the interesting piece, if you've heard us talk about this before, is 16, the, the time year. mechanism. Yeah, so it's it's dropped a little bit, but I still really like it. <laughs> Squeaky isn't that, in full force right now if you hear our table. That, that time mechanism of when you take a tile to take the action, it goes out onto your player board. And then from there, you're also putting out these little uh, hourglass tokens to depict how much time it takes to do those. And usually there is, not usually, there is a balance between your money and your time. So if I spend more money, it's gonna take less time. But if I take, you know, if, if I pay zero for something, it's gonna take two time, which is a lot. And, yep. and then you can carry over time to the next round if you want as well. Uh, I just, I really like that mechanism in the game. And there's, you know, there's some area control in this one. There's, there is, uh, uh, set collection from those cards and how you gain points through that. There's several different ways to gain points. I really like this one. It's a really it's good just... game. It it dropped off my list this year. Uh, I got it. You know, sometimes you get games, Dean, and you go, wow. Well, a lot of times. Well, I, I mean, games. you get them, like you've played them even plenty of times, and you get it, and you go, whoa, dude, why did I not have this longer? And it shoots up your list. Yeah. Sometimes you get one, you go, it's not as good as I thought it was. You know, it's still good though, and this is one of those for me. I still like it, uh, and it's still a really fun game. And it and dropped, it dropped completely off for you. It, it dropped completely off, but it was still kind of borderline. Like yeah. it's still a really good game, but it just, um, it didn't give me the feels it gave me originally. So, anyway, back to back civilization games in Tapestry and Gentis. How about that? And neither one of them feel like civilization games. How about an asymmetric <laughs> war battle of, All right. wood, of woodland creatures, might and right? Ranked number 34 overall. Root. I think that root. this... I don't... Spoiler, I am Root. Spoiler alert. This could be Dean's number one game. I'm not... He talks about this I have mentioned on a podcast. the time. It may not be. This would be the one most likely to take over that number one spot. It's... I have no idea. And that was when it was ranked like number seven, I think, at the time. I had to kind of convince you to play this game. Yeah. And yeah. you... Off the right off the rip, loved it, right? Oh yeah, you love the card. This has just a, the, not not top ten. I think I had it rated at eight and a half initially, and then I changed it after about. Uh, it's a just few months it's like Concordia was for me. It just kind of slowly yeah. kept going up for you, which games do that. I mean, this you have these asymmetric, you know, woodland creature factions, and they play differently, which is great. The card play is really fun in this game. Um, the interaction between players is really good in this game. Like, hey, we can't let this person do this and go over here. So, hey, Dean, what do you got? Can you get that over there? Can you handle that? Right. I mean, <clears throat> some people will say that's frustrating. I'm fine with that because then it can help prevent someone from just taking off and going nuts in this game. The, I, I just feel like there's a lot of play. Uh, I mean, no. Uh, ridiculous amount of player interaction in this sure. game. Sure. Mm -hmm. And um, man, this is this one fell a little bit for me, mostly because I just haven't had the chance to play it and my wife hates this game. Yeah. Um, and so I don't, and that that's why. Um, I wish I could have played it more. and maybe, maybe it could go back up a little bit for me, but still, you know, 27 overall. I love Root. It's great. Yeah, you know what I think would raise it for so you, John, good. is the expansion material. Yeah, yeah. The, the expansion stuff is really good. I haven't even played with the newest one. I play with the River Folk, which is the... I remember their names, but they're the lizards and the otters, mm. and they're fantastic. I love them. I yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. This could, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, it I, I think a you bit. would. I think not. I mean, this is a really high score, so I know you love this game, but I do think it could rise from playing. Well, we need to get it to. When this I table. was looking at like tapestry versus this, I abs I much uh, roots a better game. Like, there's no doubt about it. And I was asking myself, Oof, should I raise it up just a little bit? Because I mean that's it's the superior game for sure in my opinion. But 26, 25, 24, they're superior games as well. So yeah, tapestry and root right next to each other. They might be right next to each other on my list as well. Whoa, but, dude! If that is if that is true, tapestry from last year could be like a top five game for you. I don't really. Holy I smokes. say that not really knowing where tapestry is. Tapestry is high for me. I've, you've heard me talk about it before. Um, I have a tapestry right over there. <laughs> Is that what you call that? It's kind of gross. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it's a anyway, gross tapestry. It's, uh, I threw you off Yeah, there. it's high. I don't remember if they are back-to-back, -back, honestly, okay. but they it is. both of these are really high. Root, ooh, I love this game so much. I love teaching this game, too, because it is kind of a bear to learn. 
Um, and so if you have somebody that really knows, and you, if you listen to the podcast, I've gone around at Tennessee game days just looking for people that were playing this game <laughs> That's how much he likes that it. didn't know how to play it so I could teach them because I'm like, I want people to love this game, but it might be a little yeah. daunting for at first. Yep. It's but, unlike nothing. It's it's unlike any other game I've played. But they definitely have factions that are much easier to play, and you can say yes. play Marquita Cat or whatever. Yeah, like these ones. Yeah, yeah Marquita yeah, Cat yeah. and Irie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, Twenty-seven. Ooh. Can we Which, stop the video and play? Right yeah, now? There you go. Wow. Okay, let's do it. All right. Seriously. I don't have it. Okay. Um, it's, it's at the homestead. Twenty-seven. All right. Twenty-seven. For what you got for twenty-seven? Is Western Legends. Pew pew pew. Gosh, ah! chickens. <laughs> Playing Western Legends. Okay, <laughs> I want to shoot Ghost Chickens. Oh my gosh. Because he's creepy. He's not creepy. I don't want to shoot anyone. Have you ever seen... Always, I need to say that. Western Legends? I have no weapons. I mean, have you ever seen Ghost Chickens? At the house. I'm a peace-loving man. You like Western Legends, though. And if you have weapons, it doesn't mean that you're not peace-loving. You gotta, you know, in this digital age we have. Oh my gosh. Are we going on a lecture here? I'm, I'm just saying my, about, my... I want to talk about my game. You know, okay. Western Legends. Western Legends. Western Legends. So in this game, you can do whatever you want. Am I right? You can be good. You can be bad. You can rob banks. You can rustle cattle. You can... Go mining for gold and whatever. And take it to the bank. And then just win Which the game. Which doesn't sound very exciting. But you win the game that way. You can. You definitely can. I really, really enjoy this sandboxy game. Um, all the different... You have these different characters that you play, and they're real Old West characters. You love a Western theme. You quite enjoy it. Let me say that. Not mm -hmm. love. You quite enjoy it. Yeah, I'd have to think about it. I do. I like the idea of a good Western theme, and this is it. Like this is this is what like, I. Like you really like that about game. Nevada City that we did. Like you loved. You really enjoyed the Western theme of that. I did. Yeah. yeah. And but Pioneer Days, and I'm just trying to think of some of these other ones. But a game like Western Legends that actually is real thematic in the West. It really. That's you what on. I like. I like something that. I used to play this. Uh, this game, oh my goodness, I shouldn't have gone off on this tangent because I'm I can't remember the name of it. Mad Dog McCree, I think is the name of the old computer game. Do you remember that? Mm -mm. Alright, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to look this up. Mad Dog. I'm gonna look this up. Are anyway. You, are you finished? Uh I wanna go play that game now. <laughs> Alright, anyway, um that's Western Legends. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I really like which this one came out in 2018, I think. So I like Western Legends while you're fumbling around. Uh, 265 I, overall. I'm gonna pick too. the ball up. All right. Sorry, I'm thinking about that Mad Dog. Mad Dog McCree. Is that what it's called? <laughs> I'm gonna look it up. I like it. Uh, it's fun for like a party style. I feel like to me, it's like a, if we all want to get in character and hoot and holler, it's a fun, really fun game. If we're just if you're trying to win the game, I feel like it has. A strategy or two that dominates everything else. That's right. I don't like to play like that. Mad oh Dog yeah, I know McCree. what that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. What I that played is. that game so much; it was amazing. Do you want to? This is, is like a video quit? game of that. Maybe you want to quit the podcast to go play. It's the second Dog time McCree. I thought about that game in the last couple weeks. Actually, maybe that's maybe that means something. That's an amazing game. Let's all take a moment. It had real people and reflect in a on a CD-ROM game. It was and, amazing. And you shot them. Yeah, wow. you use your mouse and you would shoot them. Wow. That sounds. That isn't. Western Legends. <laughs> Our right, number twenty. That was number twenty-seven for you. Number twenty-six for me is a Stefan Feld game, a game that I know was way higher on your list because it is. I think, unless something has gone ahead of it, Castles of Burgundy. The Castles of Burgundy. The classic. Right. What twenty eleven? It's wait. Wait. It's not. It's. Rated. I couldn't think. I was going to say ranked and weighted, and I couldn't get rated. That's tough. It's rated 8.1. Man, what a good game, huh? 14th overall. In this game, it's hey, you got a couple, couple dice. You're throwing a couple dice down, and you're doing a bunch of different things with them. You're either getting tiles to put into your you know, city or village or whatever that is, or you're placing them into the village, or you're getting some helpers to... Uh, you know, change your dice pips a little bit. There's just, it's, it doesn't sound probably exciting to someone who has never played the Castles of Burgundy. And you look at the board and you're like, well, that's really not exciting. Yeah, it's like, what's going on here? But who cares about that stuff? Do I care about theme? No. Is it, can it be an added bonus? Sure. I, I care. The mechanics is what it's all about for me. And the gameplay of this is very, very fun. The decisions that you're making, the grueling decisions about which tile to take or whether I should use that five to place the tile, but I really want that one, but yeah. are, are just really fun decisions. I like this game a lot. 
it's actually not my f number one Stefan Feld game any anymore. So how about that? So that's a little teaser, a little appetizer for later. Still my number one Feld game for sure. Um, this is a game that I, I've got a buddy uh, named T. T and I, this is our go-to game. We can play a two-player game in, you know, less than 45 minutes, I think. And I will say this about the game. I love it. Love it as a two-player game. And even a three-player game, I enjoy it. Not so much a four-player game, especially if somebody doesn't Thanks, know what they're doing. Um, yeah, I, if, yeah. If, if, if it's somebody who has a lot of analysis paralysis and you're playing four players, even one person... I'm, I'm not that interested in playing this. My I biggest something else. <clears throat> sorry, man. My biggest knock is just having to like reference all those buildings and stuff. Yes, I need to do what you do, laminate it. But still, there's still a lot of half. Like you're thinking about it. You're talking about analysis paralysis. There can be a whole lot of. All right, let me go back and check that again. Okay, what was that one again? Okay, right, let me look here. Right. And as much as I've played it, I still have to go back and look at what the buildings mean. I have an idea, a decent idea of what many of them mean, but the iconography on the on the player mat is not the greatest. It's not bad. It is. It's good for what it is, but it's hard to express some of this stuff. Especially well, so. like if you haven't it's played really the game in a while. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you haven't played the game in a while, if you know the game well, you can just look at it and see. But I agree with that. Anyway, yeah. so which I guess that's with most games. <laughs> I just I just don't get games to the table regular. You know what I mean? Like with all the games that we do, I can't get them back to back to back to back. Yeah, it's hard to do. So then I do have to remember, have to go back and remind myself. That's right. Speaking of reminding ourselves, what number is this? 26 for you. <laughs> All right, my number 26 is... Remember. A new game. All right? Okay. It is the only 2020 game on my list. 2020 has not been an amazing year for No, me. no, 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 no. Really? I think so. No. Don't say no, it is. 20, this is the only 2020 game on your list? I think so. Oh, 2020. This um, is, we're in the year 2020. Oh my gosh. I thought you were talking about You're the about only one in the world who doesn't know this is 2020. I know what the game. Worst I know what game this year is. In the history of all the I know what game this is. It's not really. And this game is actually probably applicable to the worst years. Where because aliens this, come invade? If this happens, then it goes to a whole new level, baby. I'm going to be ready. <clears throat> Project Elite. Because I've been real time shooting up some aliens. So I'm ready. I'm ready for it. Although, if aliens come, why do we just have to shoot them? Like, can't we why just, can't we just be friends? Yeah, why can't we just what if befriend them? What if they, but these aliens attack you. Yeah, these are really they're not, they're scary nasty. aliens. These are as, aliens as that are say, running at you. They're nasty. shooting at you. They're nasty. biting you. Um, you have these bosses that come out. This is a real-time game, which John doesn't love real-time games, but you really like this one um, for that. For that, yep. Yeah, and I just... It was fun. If, the way I describe this game, and, and it, this might not sound super appealing, especially if you don't like Zombicide, it feels like a real-time Zombicide for me, which is a game that I really love a lot. I, I really like Zombicide. And your wife liked this. You she did like this one a lot. I think the difference between this and like Escape Curse of the Temple is Escape Curse of the Temple, you're playing like solid 10 minutes, super intense for that 10 minutes. This one, it's it's get the broken up. Like yeah. you play two minute rounds. And I think that really does help with it. It does. It's still stressful, especially when you're first playing and learning how to play. It's a stressful game, but it feels less stressful when it's broken up into rounds like that. I really enjoy there this one. Go. A lot of fun. Project Elite. Now this is a reprint, so I guess, yeah. The version I have is the 2020 version. I know that there's... Uh, an older version. There you go. Project Elite, <laughs> 26. All right, my number 25 is another Stefan Feld game. It's a fail fest. Fail fest. Form Trajanum. Hey, hold everyone. Don't get too excited. This is ranked 991st overall. The lowest ranked game of today, I would it's say. Absolutely. And Probably. I just did I a like Stefan Fell game that was ranked 14 overall. And I say, is this 991 ranked overall game better than Castles of Burgundy? Yes. Look at that. In your face. Project Elite, 2,350. Yeah, but that's because it's 20. It is a new it'll, game. It'll go. Yeah. But uh, I really love Form Trajanum. And it's really interesting. It's only rated 7.3. Um, it came out in 2018. And from the first time we played it, I really liked it, Dean. But yeah. I, a lot of people don't have the same feels. Like, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, I think, you know, people who love Stefan Feld like, like this game. But I just think that it has really great decisions. 
and it's full of those, all right, that agonizing two, you know, you got these little, these people, well, actually you're first picking a card and you're like, which one do I pick from this row? And which one do I pick from this column? And let me see if I can line them up right. Now I have these two guys and, or gals, and you're like trying to figure out um, which one to use. And then um, how, which envoy do I send to the forum? And it's just like a lot of small decisions that connect into this really cool puzzle that I, I, I just, I really like this game. I don't, I don't know why it just, it just gives me wonderful feels when I play it. Yeah. You know, good, bad, or ugly, Stefan Feld, when he has games that are released, they're always compared to his own games because yeah. he's so amazing. Um, this one came out the same year as Carpe Diem, which we both enjoyed as well, but but for sure both of us... I thought this us, was so much better. Yeah, both of us really like Forum for Dream a lot better. But there We're are, in the minority for, on that, and I'm fine with that. What's Carpe Diem ranked, I wonder? Oh, way higher. You go ahead and you do, I'll, I'll look it up. That's interesting. I, and, I mean, Carpe Diem was... Uh, did it's it, it's it more approachable for did sure. Win this spiel, or I know it was nominated. Oh, it was. It was non nominated for the Kenner spiel. That's the Kenner why. spiel. Okay. Yeah, that's that's. It's ranked three seventy eight. So actually, that's not like ridiculous. I mean, yeah. it is much higher, but it's really fun though. I, I really like. I like Carpe Diem. It's it's fine. But um, this is this is so good. If you haven't played this and you're a Stefan Fell fan, I really love Form to Janum. and you had it on your list too. Yeah, it was my somewhere in my forties. Yep. I think forty six maybe. There you go. That shit's off the top of my head. I don't even know. Well, it was my number 25. So, what's your number 25? 25 so? is a Stefan. Wow. It, it's a fair fest. Amerigo. Good gracious. Amerigo oh, is... Oh, it's a wonderful game. 2013 release, one of the games that I had never played up until a couple months ago. And I as well. We were blown away, both of us. What's it ranked? This is ranked uh, 339 overall. So it's, it's around that Carpe Diem range. This is a really funny game oh. to me because I don't understand because why it doesn't get more love. This game... I agree is amazing it's really really good and and one of his best and it's hard for me to see like somebody who would say that this, this isn't one of his best it's a little mind-boggling for me but in this game there is uh exploration where you're going around the map with your ship and then there's this polyomino piece where you're putting those land pieces out onto the board but the coolest thing of this game is the cube tower which i can't find a picture of now of course of um, course the cube tower is your favorite yeah one. so the cube tower you throw cubes into the tower to determine how many actions you can get and what actions you can take for that round and i think that's really i love the action selection this it's game. really interesting yep. i love it a lot but there's also some mitigation to that too so if any of the white cubes come out you can take the action of the white space that you're on, or the space mm -hmm. that you're on on the white track, I guess, whatever that's And that, that track called. gives you victory points too, so you have those decisions yeah. like, I love this being on this red space because I need to get more tiles. However, if I don't go up, then I not only don't get victory points, it's also the um, whoever's first player, whatever, player order track yeah. as well. So, that, dude, it he is, is so it's, You get points for everything. The, the other yeah. thing is, and this is a positive, you move up this tech track, and when you reach these certain thresholds, you get different technology that change the rules of the game for you. My negative with that is that when you just have the base game with no queenies, which I don't have any of the queenie stuff, it's the same tech tiles every game. They come out at different times, but it's always I the same ones, yeah. and I want more of those. That's, that's my biggest knock, I, and there's not a lot of knocks I have on this game. I, I, love, I like I, this one a lot. I like this game more than Dean. Yeah. So this is a game that we both played this year. Is it a competition? That's number 20. I like it more than yeah, he does. Yeah, I do. Yeah, it is a competition. <laughs> that It's number 25 for him and even higher for me. If you haven't, if you like Stefan Feld and you haven't played this, you are really... I thought you were, are you going to name call? I was going to say you're out to sea because it's uh, about islands and stuff. Okay. You need to find land and put some polyomino pieces on there. There it is. Number right. 25 for you. My number 24 is a game that is out of this world. And it is so out of the world that Dean has it higher. Or no? Who knows? Yes. Roll for the Galaxy. This is ranked number 84 overall. A 2014 game. It is a game that 
kind of killed race for the galaxy for me even though i've been i've been having a hankering to get race back out so we'll see maybe maybe um but in this game i mean it, it's really fun decisions i mean you chuck your dice you then you have to figure out where you want to put them and making those determinations on which row you want to put them into whether you want to explore those picture. different actions yeah it's it's well and it's done. it's fun little engine building uh quick game two players I man we can play this in like half an hour and you feel like yeah. You can probably play less than yeah. half an hour. It's, we play it really fast. It's close. It's yeah. It's one of my favorite race games. Maybe my favorite. I'm trying to think of what else is ranked ahead of this. Um, We've not played uh, New Frontiers. Yeah, it's true. But oh my goodness, how do I get out of here? All oh right, no, here we go. your internet. But I just Thomas Lehman knocked it out of this world. Not even out of the park. We knocked it out yeah. of the, this world. Out of the galaxy. Out of the galaxy. Galaxy star. I'm the star of the galaxy. Yeah, this this is a, a lot of fun. I would say the base game of this one would not make my list. I'll talk about this later when I get to it. But right. the expansions like are it. great. The expansion, both of them, the, the ambition, ambition and, and I particularly like rivalry. But rivalry ambition is, awesome. is, is good too. Rivalry, rivalry is so good. <laughs> I was like, I was powering down as I said. <laughs> rivalry, I got to power back rivalry. up. <laughs> Number <laughs> twenty-four. Twenty-four. John's Roll for the Galaxy. My number 24 is a pretty simple worker placement game. I actually reference this at the beginning of the episode. Lords of Waterdeep? Lords of Waterdeep, that's right. Uh, this is a game Classic. that came out in 2012. Classic worker placement game. This is kind of like a... Um, it, yeah, it fits in that, that classic category, which most... I don't know. I, there probably most people that are in the hobby have played this game or at least heard of it, seen it, played, or something like that. Um, but I like this game for its simplicity, but it's my wife and I, one of our go-to games. Now, this is a, a, a Dungeons & Dragons theme game, but if that's not your thing, then you don't, it doesn't really play out. Like, you're not, it doesn't feel like you're playing Dungeons & Dragons. Now, if you like the theme, you know, you, that, you, you don't care, but if you're like, oh, I don't care about dragons or, or any of that. It's still fun. It's still a lot of fun. I really enjoy this one. I would say for this one as well, the base game's a lot of fun, but this one, I think the expansion really ramps it up a lot. Um, good. It's a good game. Yeah, it is. I'm, I'm interested to see, like, this is one that they could do a deluxified version in, like, the 10th year is coming up in you're hoping 2022. For that, huh? um, the production's not awful. There are some... some uh, I don't know if it's just my version, but some of the cards are kind of upside down a little bit. Uh, I, I don't upside know how. Down. Like it doesn't really matter, but like it says quest, and and then like on the back side it will say quest, and then on the other side oh. the cards upside down, which is fine. But then the base game cards are not that way. So like the expansion of base, yeah. I hate when they so it's it's you know wonky stuff like that, and it's probably just my version of it. But anyway, really enjoy this game. It's probably fun. not just your version of it. <laughs> It is only my my yeah. copy is the only one. Yeah. I'm guessing they fixed it, is what I'm saying. They I got probably you. fixed it. I got you. I thought you meant your very own copy. That's your number twenty four. My number twenty three is a game that starts back in ancient times and comes all the way to now times. Now in times. Now in times. That's Tapestry. What, that's what country folks say. Through the ages, a story of civilization. This is ranked six overall. What do you, um, before I say something, how do you feel about this game? I like this game. Wow. I've only played the app version. I can't really comment on this. Yes, and I, I like the, okay, I like this game. You sound like my son. We were playing just one, and like, if it's, you know, Eiffel Tower, he says, big. He's 12, too. He's smart. He's actually really <laughs> smart. And if it's mouse, he says, small. It, he has, he cannot describe anything whatsoever. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't, it's hard for me to, to really gauge app games, but I, I do think this one's fun. The, the card play is is interesting, but it's it's pretty complex too. And I feel like playing the physical copy of this game will make me like it more mm -hmm. because I tend to do better yeah. at physical copies of games than the app games. Like I can grasp them better, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah, this game is fantastic. The card play is what it's all about, really, in this game. Now, this game can be a nasty, honestly. Like, you can actually definitely go over and destroy other people's stuff and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, if you don't like Take That, then this might not be the game for you. I'm not a huge fan of Take That unless it's just we're going to take that. And then I'm like, let's do it. Let's go. And in this game, let's do it. Let's go. That's how you play the game. Fun. Great card work. I love 
you know, I'm not, like I said before, I'm not a huge theme guy, but it, it, I like it feeling thematic. Like I'm building towards something. I love feeling like I'm, I like to like about a year ago, watching all the pieces fill out on the board as we're exploring. I love like sitting back and going, look at the civilization I built. Like I really accomplished something at the end of the game. I get those feels. Totally understand why it's ranked six overall through the ages. Wonderful. It can be hard to keep your people happy too, which is Got to keep the people happy. You got to keep them happy. They're going to revolt. That's it. Not. But yep, yep, this is a fun one. I got to play the physical copy though. I can't really comment that well on it. My number 23, I believe is where we're at. Yep. Is a game that I think you'll have higher. This is a card drafting game. Another like pure of its form. Wonderful game. Like in its genre. Seven Wonders. Ooh. Actually, this is a 2010 turn my, game. Turn my volume down. But they recently did a, a reprint of this one. I don't know if it's out yet. But I don't think it where is. They redid the cards. It's got like gold foil on the back of the cards. The way they splay is, is easier. It's a really beautiful production. But in this game... It is another, another technically civilization game with no theme. Through the Ages is the only actual civilization feeling game out of all these ones we've talked about. Um, but you're, oh my goodness. So, okay, looking at oh. the picture on this, <laughs> this is probably a seven or maybe even eight player game, I guess. You look at the know, table and you're like, take that, many to make that it is a lot. That one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so you can really fill up a table quickly. Yes. But I love the player interaction in this one. You have to pay attention to, to what either player beside you is doing and the other players too, because you don't want to hand them off cards. And you don't want to that try to. You need to take. And if you try to build like the green cards too late in the game, yeah, the, everyone's taking them, and now you realize, wow, I probably can't really score that many points this way. But yeah. then you think, oh, but should I take them so they don't get them? Yeah. Now this one can be tricky. It, it is a a lot of people put this in that gateway game category, but it can be tricky to learn the symbology if you've not played a whole lot of games in the past. But I think once you get into the game and play through a round, it, it becomes pretty clear, at least a game. And the other thing I love about this game, it plays in about 30 minutes. And that's with, it doesn't matter how many players you have, it's gonna play in 30 minutes. And I love that, because yeah. you can have seven people sitting around the table involved in this seven, strategic game. Seven people in this? Yeah. Seven wonders. Yeah, it's a wonder you can fit seven people in this game. It's wonderful. All right. That, My number 23. It's a really great choice. And if you play the app, you can play a game in like seven minutes. Speaking of sevens, seriously, oh, yeah. it's really that fast. Especially, if, yeah, for sure. There's also a two-player version of this game, which I enjoy quite a bit. Yes. I actually like Seven Wonders better. I do too, but Duel is great. Yep. It's really great. All right, that is your number 23. My number 22 is a game that I just absolutely love. It's a 2012 Richard Breeze game. Brilliant game, Key Flower. Key Flower is ranked number 58. Overall, it's a 7.8 on BGG. And... What I love about Keyflower is the way we were just talking about. What game were we talking about that you do the same things? Oh, uh, Everdale. How you can go and do the worker placement in conjunction with Tableau Building. You got to decide Look which one to go first. Dude, is. this game is so great because you're auctioning for tiles at the same time that you're like putting out your meeples to go do actions. And the crazy thing is, is your opponents can go to your town or village and use your actions. And so you're like, ugh. Wow, I think Dean only has, you know, two blue guys. If I put two up here, then I definitely get that tile. But if I do that and he goes to this spot on my board, I'm gonna flip the table. Yeah. And it's it's brilliant fun. Engine building, little engine building goodness in there. This is one of those games that has steadily risen, like you had said about oh. um whatever you talked about the other <laughs> earlier. I wish you'd listen to me sometimes. Yeah. But anyways, this is the way that that has happened. <laughs> That's a great, 22 key flower. I love key flower so much. This this game is it is fantastic. For all those things that you just said. Wow, there's there's nothing like this game. Yeah, I know. I know you know there's there's different like parts of this game in other games, sure. but the way that the player interaction happens in this one is is really great. Mwah. Love this game. Yep. It's amazing. Key flower year number 22, my yeah. number 22 is Underwater Cities. Oh. You don't like this one? I love this one. Oh, okay. I love this right. even more than you. That's why I said, oh, like, I'm like, oh. This but is still, uh, 21 is really high. Ranked. Good answer. 51 overall. Good answer. Um, so I have it ranked higher than the average bear, I think. Right? I know that. What? Yogi Bear. Oh. <laughs> 
Okay, all right, way to go. This is a- smarter, smarter than the average bear. This is a game where you are taking these pieces and placing them out on the board. John, we call it a worker placement game, where you're putting these- It absolutely is a worker. <laughs> because there's not meeples, he says that it's not worker yeah, placement. Yeah, you gotta have You meeples. take a thing and put it on the board and do the action. <laughs> totally kidding. But the thing that I like about this game a lot is the feel, like the terraforming Mars type feel of building these different cards out onto your board. And you're also putting these buildings, these little domes, onto your own player map because you're building up the city underwater. And you it's straight up card play and worker placement on how you do that. It's a beautiful production, but I just think it's a lot of fun and gives me the same sort of feel as Terraforming Mars. But I, I do think they're very different games, but yes. it, still, it gives me some of the same I feels. love both of them. Yeah, they're both really fantastic games. I don't want to talk about it now because I'm going to talk about it later. Hey, go, pull up the designer of that game. Vladimir Suki. Guess what? who the designer of my next game is. Stefan Feld. I was Vlad teeing you up like your friend, T. Vladimir Suki. There it is. Pulsar 2849. Now this is a game that's steadily risen for me as well. People compare this to Castles of Burgundy and don't make me get on my soapbox. I just had a thought. So we have a lot of 2017 games in this. This oh, 2017. 2018. I thought Underwater Cities was 17. But 2017 was good. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, pers Pulsar. Pulsar 2849 gets compared to Castles of Burgundy, and let me get in my soapbox. It is not like Castles of Burgundy. Okay. I sort of get the It looks kind just like of, it. It looks nothing like <laughs> it. Like, you don't even have your own board. You're all playing together. It has dice. I have no idea what just wow, happened. Wow, you draft a I couple. Just clicked on the, <laughs> you're trying just to click on the You're editor. buying a game there. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh. You're, you're, you know, you're drafting a couple dice, and you're deciding what to do with them. What's it, there's so much? It, uh, I love Castles of Burgundy. No knock on that, but I don't. I just don't like the comparisons. But anywho, this game you're drafting these dice to take your little ship, and you're going around, and you're building gyrodones, and you're deciding uh, going up the tech tree. You're getting it's got engine building goodness. You're building these um, transmitters. You have a ton of choices in this game on just different things to do with these dice. And what's so brilliant is is when you. Sp Pick the dice, you have to go up or down on these two different, like an engineering track and the first place on player order track. And so you really want this one die, but you're like, oh no, that's gonna take me down and I'm gonna be third next round. And so you have these agonizing decisions of I want that die for that reason, but I don't want it for this reason. And it does have a, it does, I get the kind of Feldish feel, but um, Vladimir Suhi is amazing. This game is fantastic. Uh, weighed at 3.31. Dean played it one time and didn't love it. He has to play it again because I think he will like it a lot. Yeah, I do. I do. Yeah, late night learn game. Those are hard. It was bad conditions. You sound like me. I did late night learn game. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that made sense. It's, I was doing the uh, the Kevin. I've Kevin had Malone, there you go. The, I've had those. I've had those though, Dean. Where you like you've been playing at a con, and you finally or something, and you're just like just tired and exhausted. I yeah, this was a, like this. a long game day, is what it was. Um, and they both knew the game, but I didn't. And I t that's a that's a bad situation for me. Learning a new game late at night, where everyone else knows the game except me, often is not a good situation. Yeah, it's such a good game. If you haven't played this, you got to check it out. Yep. Uh, I don't know what that thing is. What is that? Oh, that's actually someone just has it. It should just there's not that's not part of the game. I assume so. I assume there's yeah. some kind of a three D so that is like dinosaur. Just, Are there just, dinosaurs in this game? You just r ranked up a whole half of a point because you, because of that piece that's in the board. I didn't know there were dinosaurs in the space <laughs> game, so I am for that. I don't. I think it's like maybe that was like an asteroid or something. No, it was a dinosaur. Was, All right. All right. That's, another, never, that's it for me. I'm okay. done. I'm done. So you don't want to hear mine. Twenty one. I guess. All right. Twenty one for me. I've done pure card drafting, pure uh, worker placement. Now I'm going to go on to pure deck building Dominion. Wow. 2008 release. This is a pure deck building game. And you have a lot of this game. I do. I don't have all of it, but I do have a lot. I've, I've customized this little wooden box to... Um, to put all the cards in there, but I ran out of space because they said, hey, we're done with the expansions. You know what? They were not done with the expansions. They came out with like three more after that one. Did you, can I pause? Do you know that my first band name was Little Wooden Box? That's a horrible name. That was- I was in seventh grade. That we was called the our, name? We okay. called our band Little Wooden Box. <laughs> so go ahead, continue. So, Whoa! That's oh, some, oh. some lightning or something in here. Go ahead. Just wanted to give that this fun This is not factoid. part of the game. 
<laughs> that's a good picture. That is a good time. All right, I'm gonna leave it there because there's that's not. I'm picture. not finding a lot of good pictures. It's so cards in this game. Yeah, you are deck building, and the thing I like about this is even in the base game, if you just have the base game. The amount of replayability you have is really high because you're only playing with 10 different of the Kingdom cards throughout the game. And there's it comes with more than that, like 26, I think, in each set or some something like that. So there's Lots. a lot of variability in the different sets. But then you add the expansions. I really like Prosperity. I like the Sea... Uh, what is the water one called? Seaside, maybe. Is that right? Something like that. Yeah. Prosperity... Um, guilds, I really like that one a lot. I haven't played the newer ones, but now people are telling me you gotta play the new ones because they're fantastic. My wife and I love, love, love this game. We've played with it a lot. Uh, we've played this really game a game. lot and played with a lot of the expansion stuff, just randomizing. Um, the attack stuff isn't always my favorite, but we typically have some Agreed. attack stuff in there just to play it. So um, It was kind of a bubble for me uh, since I like drama so much. What about the people right now that are listening going, Dean, this is like this is there's so much better deck building games. This is old. It's not as good. This is just too old school. What do you say to them? Because there's a lot of those people out there that say that we've surpassed Dominion. That was supposed to be like the Kermit the Frog drinking the tea. You I know. know. You know. Kermit the Frog. I'm not. I'm not concerned about what other people think, honestly. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That was so anticlimactic. I mean, what do you want me to say? I want you to say, I, it's... you're a bunch of idiots. And if you want to, you can come to my house. My address is blah, 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 blah. And you can knock on my door and you can meet Justice and Thunder. Thunder and Justice? That's what you got? Yes. Yeah, I, I'm okay with that. I, I do believe that that a lot of people love, you know, like Clank is one that's really high on people's list now. Uh, Quest for El Dorado is a lot of fun, kind of fits that, where you're doing something else besides just the deck building. Mm -hmm. And I like that. You, Concordia has that, where you're deck building, but you, but it's only a small piece of the game, um, and not the whole piece of the game. Clank gets bigger, but it's still not the whole game. You like the purity. I, I like the purity of it. Yeah, and you know, I, I'd like that in a lot of games. You know, obviously I put Seven Wonders and I put... Uh, Lords of Waterdeep on here. I like sometimes just the simplicity of having that one mechanism be the main thing that I'm doing in this game. <coughs> Excuse me. And there's a lot of other games, deck builders that do that part as well. Um, Aeon Zen has that. Um, I would say that. <coughs> goodness. Oh. Um, what's what's Matt, the, uh, Ascension? Wrap up this Ascension episode. has that. There's a lot of different games that have that. A uh, Thunderstone, you know, that pure deck builder. But I still like this one where it's. Just themeless, trying to get points. Boom. That's it. There it is. All right. Number 21, Dominion for me. Why don't you tell people how they can get in touch with us? All right, so that was our numbers 30 through 21, y'all. We're moving on. Only a couple more. We're done with this thing. I'm so excited about the next one. MeepleTownGames.com has all of our stuff. We would love for you to subscribe to our channel if you are enjoying it. And also, you can click that bell for notifications so you can know when the next two... Um, rankings are coming out are 20 through whatever and whatever through whatever and we What's are that, at meeple town games we are board game geek guild 3407 thanks for coming down to meeple town thanks for joining us and be sure to follow us on twitter at meeple town games and connect with us on the meeple town guild guild number 3407 at boardgamegeek.com and also subscribe to our podcast and YouTube channel. And until next time, thanks for coming down to Meeple Town.